Raiders, Chargers. Raiders contra los Chargers. This thing is going to be electric. And Monday Night Football. It's going to be a sea of silver and black sprinkled in with some powder blue. It's a gran rivalidad en el oeste del americano, una rivalidad añeja. I don't think there's a young quarterback I would take over Justin Herbert. Look at the numbers he's put up. This kid has got the good. The Chargers need to go back to San Diego. They're never going to take over our league. The Raider fans are coming strong. So I'm expecting a lot of fireworks. Both these teams need to put their foot on the gas. The best he's ever seen right now. It's a final Touchdown, Herbert, quick throw. Mike Williams makes the first man miss. Toward the end zone, lead. Touchdown, Chargers. Let's go all day long, man. We go home with the win. Welcome to Inglewood, California, the city of champions on Monday night. Some 12 miles. It's a couple-hour drive. From Hollywood, the stars will be out tonight as the Raiders and Chargers clash. Welcome to the progressive Monday night kickoff. Derek Carr leads the number one passing offense in the NFL in a SoFi Stadium for an expected old-fashioned high-scoring AFC West shootout against the young phenom that is Justin Herbert. Two unbeatens remain. The Cardinals took care of the Rams at this very stadium yesterday, and then there are the Raiders here tonight. And with that, we say hi, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to Monday Night Football. I'm Steve Levy with Lewis Riddick and Brian Greasy. You know, it's been 19 years since the Raiders started 4-0. That's also the last time they won a playoff game, oh, by the way. When we talked to Derek Carr, no one's ever been more excited to win the AFC Offensive Player of the Month award. Whatever, Levy. He did not say that. He could care less about the awards. He could care less about throwing for 400 yards, throwing for 200 yards. It doesn't matter to Derek Carr, but maybe most importantly, he doesn't care what any of us think about his play. He has set the tone. No more excuses, no more external validation. This team is following his tone that he's setting. When your two best players, Darren Waller and Josh Jacobs, are your most unselfish and they start to follow your quarterback like that, then you have something cooking. And last week against the Chiefs, they made him pay. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I got a chance to talk to Derek Carr pre-game down here, and I can give you this really one word, or two words. He's locked in. He doesn't care about the past, doesn't care about the future, and he said to me, look, I'm just getting started. But I'll tell you what, tonight, speaking of locked in, for the folks at home, lock in on the Raiders' defense, because this is their stiffest challenge here tonight against this high-powered Chargers passing attack. And one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to be a coming out party for Gus Bradley in this revamped defense, or they're going to get exposed, and they're going to get exposed through the air. Now, Gus has some pass rushers. He has people who can get after Justin Herbert. Now, can they hold up in coverage on the back end where they're pretty simple and they rely on execution? Big, big test. Raiders have trailed in all three of their games so far, able to come from behind to win. Then the Chargers opened a lot of eyes a week ago. They're 2-1, and one, but they win in Kansas City and grease the question around the league. Is Justin Herbert the next great, the next NFL superstar quarterback? I really think he is. And there were so many expectations coming into this season after what he did a year ago. And the entire Chargers organization had anticipation for this year. That has turned to belief. Belief from everybody in the organization after what he did last week in Kansas City, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Patrick Mahomes, four touchdowns, the way they won at the end. There is no question that Justin Herbert has everybody believing that he is the guy. Yeah, there's no doubt. He's making believers out of defensive players for sure because they say he plays well beyond his years. Very advanced. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons why he's very advanced, have you looked at his wide receiver core? It looks like an NBA team out there. Keenan Allen, 6'2", Mike Williams, 6'4", and then Derek Cook, 6'5". They have got some balls. Lisa Salters is coming up next. And then it's the Raiders, the Chargers, like it ought to be. ESPN's Monday Night Football. Give me everything you got, let's see what happens. Victory in overtime. Here. Welcome back to Monday Night Football at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. For the 13th consecutive season, the NFL has teamed up 
with the American Cancer Society for its Crucial Catch Intercept Cancer Initiative, something that has a special meaning for Chargers first year head coach, Brandon Staley. Brandon Staley will always remember his first win as an NFL head coach. Three weeks ago, September 12th, on what would have been his mother's 64th birthday. Linda Staley died in 2004 after fighting breast cancer for nine and a half years. In 2007, when Staley was a grad assistant coach at Northern Illinois, he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. He beat it and has now been cancer free for 14 years. And just last season, while Staley was a first year defensive coordinator for the Rams, his father, Bruce, was being treated for prostate cancer. He, too, is now a cancer survivor. Facing cancer is what the Staley family does, and it's what Brandon Staley says has shaped him into the competitor that he is today. I certainly wouldn't be the head coach of the Chargers if, you know, cancer hadn't been a big part of my life, both with my folks and, and with me. And so I just i am hoping that, you know, I can always live an example that other people can, can, can be inspired by. Did it feel a bump? It got pretty big over time. I had a, a pretty significant mass here and then on my chest. Staley has inspired people, like 32-year-old John Gillette, a Chargers fan who got a chance to meet him in April, just a month after his own cancer diagnosis. Gillette told me just talking to Staley gave him hope that he could be just like the head coach of his favorite team, a survivor. You're going to be good. Yeah. And you'll, you'll be coming to a game and we'll be celebrating. After completing three rounds of chemotherapy in June, John Gillette is doing well and is here at the game tonight, doing just what Brandon Staley said, celebrating four months of being cancer free. You've been watching the progressive Monday night kickoff. Monday night Pick'em Fans Pick, presented by T-Mobile, America's largest, fastest, and most reliable 5G network. And the fans pick, Los Angeles. Stay tuned to see if they got it right. On a 75 degree Southern California late afternoon, we're not going to start on time tonight. Got some crazy thunderstorms raging outside, taking the bolts thing a little too far. It's been out of the sideline, at least saw it. Yes, Steve, uh, both teams have now gone back to their respective locker rooms. Uh, the officials have left the field as well, but I was able to, to catch up with a couple of them, and they said that all that they have been told is that this is a weather delay because of lightning in the area. They have not been told how long this delay could last. Steve? All right, Lisa, back with Brian and Lewis, and so uh, you saw it. A John Gruden's reaction there. Grease, what was Gruden saying to the official? He said, don't we play in a dome here? <laughs> there, so there is a roof. There is a roof here. For $5 billion, you get a roof. The sides are open here at SoFi Stadium, but we are covered and dry for now. Yeah. yeah, look, this is this is a challenge for the players. You know, you you saw the Raiders. Derek Carr led his team out onto the field. Yeah. He's like, Did delay? I want to kick this thing off. I want to get this going. So now you gotta you kind of kind of gear back down, make sure you stay loose, make sure you get as much of a time frame as far as when this is going to kick off again, and just get geared back up because this is a big, big game for both of these teams. Yeah, the Chargers never came out. They, right. That was an advantage for them. The Raiders came out. You get lathered up, you're ready to go, and it yeah. was a smart move from John to take them back in the locker room because you're going to want that schedule to be as uh, – as solid as possible. I'm still laughing about the Gruden. You could see him like, a, don't we play in a dome? Can we play in some rain and lightning? Uh, so the communication will be ongoing between the NFL offices in New York and, of course, the officials here. And so we say uh, good evening earlier than usual to John Barry. John, what's the, how the officials handle this kind of communication? Yeah, this is awkward for everybody. Uh, you get all ganged up and you're ready to go, and then you get this, this delay. But all of this comes from New York. And underneath all these beautiful stadiums, there's a command center. State-of-the-art technology with all kinds of weather data. This decision is made by New York to wait this storm out. And when they feel it is safe, they'll notify the officials. They'll go to both teams. They'll tell both teams when they should come out, give them a brief time for warm-up, and hopefully we'll get this thing kicked off. All right, John, thank you for that. So uh, we will keep everyone posted as soon as we hear 
as for a kickoff time upcoming. Let's go down to the field. Fortunately, Susie and her gang are here with us at SoFi Stadium. Yes, Steve, we're happy to kill some time with all of you, and there is some confusion on... ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Concession sales are really brisk. This crowd will be even more fired up. But as it pertains to the game, the Raiders have not scored a first quarter touchdown all season. They've gotten behind every game. How does it impact the game tonight, folks? I don't think it has that much of an impact. You know, we heard what Susie said. These guys, they have prepared all week, and they were ready to go. They get to the stadium early. Another 30 minutes, not a big factor. Yeah, this is a big game. I think that they had to wait an hour, two hours. They are amped up to play this game. It has a lot of ramifications for the rest of don't get their best performance tonight. Tell me again who's the home team here tonight. I see the giant bolt in the middle of the field, but when the Raiders came out, wow. Exactly. Raiders are saying we were here first. Rams had a, a bit here in L.A., but this was our town first, and they have showed up tonight. I'll tell you, when I played for the Raiders, when I played in Oakland, we used to go down to San Diego. I remember the first time I ran out of the tunnel at Jack Murphy Stadium, I was going... We hit the Coliseum. We still did we get on a flight? No, these these, these fans travel as well as anybody, man. They're amped up. Staring at Lowry Roundtree, Daniel Carlson set to kick it off. In the end, it will be a 35-minute delay. Scheduled kick to actual kick. The Chargers will get the football first. And will do so at their own 25-yard line. 